All right, Shalom. First off, I want to start off saying all praises, honor, and glory is due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadosh. It's all praises due to the war calls God, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, by Hashem in and in the name of Yahweh Shai, be the name of the only begotten Son. Also, when I say double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone and peace and mercy to the hopeful light, preaching, sword, and truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Taz Abon in Great Millstone, Arizona Camp, Lord Will, with another video to edify. And um, I wanted to go on this video, go on another one. Um, uh, both by the elder Amon Gabar and uh, Lord Willis be edifying because uh, these things got to be addressed, right? And to Bishop Nate Nathaniel of the IUIC, if he and his congregation don't address this, right? Because what you're gonna see is some it's it's some wild stuff. If he if they don't address this, I could see the Lord start putting out that severe judgment real soon, man. Right? These things were supposed to be checked. You're not supposed to be able to put yourself above. You're not supposed to promote yourself and let your people think you're promoting yourself above what you are. All right? We just men. Yeah, how wish I gets all the glory, all the praise. Jumping and clapping and Look at this. Now, this same woman, this same woman and the other ones that are going to show, they don't get a, hey, I, 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 I can almost guarantee you, they don't get this, they own men the same praise and respect as they'll get this, these men that ain't even their husbands. They don't show this much joy to their husband. They get home, talking, running their mouth. Look at that. And now they, they, all, hey, all these women ain't married to Nate Daniel. Uh, uh to the, the to the to the three that pull up on this. Right? Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. See that? Shalom. This whole hour show, right? And the one where he was on the horse too. Right? I'm not even gonna worry about finding the one where he's on the horse too. Right? But he's rolling in on a horse and everything, which which that's part part of exalting yourself. Yeah, I wish I didn't even roll in on a horse. Right, and now in his other video, right? I was shy and double right honor the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone. Who told me this truth and salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth? All right, my name is Amon Gabar, and I'm back with another quick lesson, Lord Willis, edifying straight into the point. All right, and this was a post from the community section that I just screenshotted at um 8:35, and the brother out there in Virgin Islands shared it, and he put shaking my head from um Aishiyah Yasharala, who shared it. And his caption is, these three men are the real saviors? Question mark, question mark, really? Question mark, question mark, question mark, explanation marks with a face palm. And this is posted from the IUIC Rochester, New York. Entitled, Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasab, and Bishop Kanai. The mighty men of God, the real saviors. And then you right. got the picture right there. And this, is, right? this is on their stuff. This is, on, this is what the congregation is putting in the mindset to believe. That now these are the saviors. So what y'all gonna call this? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit over here? Well, what 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 is what is it gonna say? All right? And these are things that gotta be nipped in the butt when when uh let me get this, man. How does it go? It's um They try to call Paul Apollos.
Right? They try to call him Apollos and Mercury. Yeah, here it is. Acts 14 and, uh... Start at 11, it says, And when the people saw that Paul had done, or what, what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, in, in the speech of the uh, Laconia, Lycanoia, Ly man, I can't even say it, uh, the gods are come down unto us, come to us in the likeness of men, right? You got these people jumping, shaking at the, at, at the boots, trying to praise these men, even putting up that these are the saviors where, well, I understand where they're coming at, but it, hey, none of us are saviors until the Lord sets us up. So when these people start saying these things like this, right? When these people start saying these things like this, there needs to be some correction done. There needs to be some correcting done because this is what Paul did. Right? You can't let things like this just go rapid. Now, back in this precept, Acts 14 and, um, and, and 12, it says, and they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius and, and Paul Mercurius uh, because he was the chief speaker and the priest of, of Jupiter, which was before the city, before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and they would have done sacrifice with the people. Right. So they, they when uh, peep, peep, the apostle Paul's and Barnabas's mindset when they heard this. When they saw men putting themselves up to this, this state that they knew they wasn't at. And that was against the Lord. It says verse 14, it says, uh, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying and saying, Sirs, why do ye this thing? We also are men of like passion with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living power. So you shouldn't be making no man your God. Make Yahweh Shai your God. Make Yahweh your God. Not turn to other men. And these things need, hey, the right thing to do will be for them to sit here and see this post that they put in this video. Bishop. Right? Calling them the saviors. To quell all this, uh, all this wild, undeserved, over, over, praise to the point where these people are looking at them like their guys in the word of the Lord comes comes through them and not the Lord works through them to break down the word of the Lord there's that they they act like the word of the Lord comes through them because they should have got on them just like this it says um sirs why do you these things we are men of like passion with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these things, these vanities unto the living power, which made heaven and earth and, and the sea and all things therein, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Right. He cut them. He told, hey, man, you ain't supposed to do this. We men. Where, where is that conversation being had? It's like more and more stuff comes out where, where, where it's going left. Right. But that's what should have been done. Now, I'm going to start moving through these precepts. Because I got a decent amount. This is Matthew 17, 7. Salakia. Matthew 7 and uh, 17. It says, um, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And it's corrupt for you to sit here and let your congregation get to the point where you think that, where, where they, they're thinking like, like, like you're the Lord. It shouldn't get to that point. But these people are letting it th these things build up, right? And foolish women are being carried away. And, and they're getting swept away in this. Thinking about all type of adultery. How they will, oh, they would love to be with Nate. Which, uh, hey, I don't, I don't really care about what the women are doing, but. You men should be sitting here rebuking these things. This is promoting wickedness. 
It says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth corrupt fruit. This, hey, and a fruit is a byproduct, right? So the word was supposed to be seed, the fruit is the byproduct, and you're supposed to move in righteousness. It says, every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down, is, well, every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into fire. Now, you walking in on a horse, and I wish I, I wish I had the, the, the video still, man. You walking in on a horse. Actually, I think it's in the group. This dude is moving like he's a king. This dude is moving like he's a king. Right? Like you just got done going to war, slaying the Philistines. Rolling through like you're a king. The scriptures tell you all our kings went in captivity. We got to be, our, our king now is Yahweh Shai. So how are you coming up in this stead and you putting, propping yourself up to this, this acclaim? It, these things should be, should be addressed. Because it's producing a fruit that ain't good. And, and the Lord will come and hew down that tree, man. Wherefore by thy fruits ye shall know them. Now is this a fruit of a man in humility serving the Lord? Or is he... Or he's, he's trying to get a name and a claim. Look at him. Right? And then they got this grandiose interest, like it's a WWE match. Keep it simple. Just, just do what the Lord said, man. And it's very detrimental and it's very, very much dangerous, bro. Right? Even Moses made a slip of the tongue. And took a major L for himself. Right? It's Exodus 20 and 10. It says, And Moses and Aaron gathered to, gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you. Right? He said, Must we fetch you water out of this rock. This is where he fucked up. This is where Moses made his mess up. And Moses lifted up his hand. Uh, and with his rod, he smote the, the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and there, and there, uh, it's so like in their beast also, right? And Yahweh said unto, spake unto Moses and Aaron, because he, ye believed me not to sanctify me. In the eyes of the children of Israel, why, how did they not sanctify him? Because he said, hey, should we? He, he took it upon himself, him and Aaron. Should we? Right? He spoke those words. And the Lord said, because you didn't believe me uh, to sanctify me in, in the eyes of the children of Israel, he didn't get the Lord the, the, the full out glory right there. Therefore, ye shall not. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I which I have given them. Right. And when you go to Psalms 106, it tells you exactly why. And these Christians got it off, bro. They got it off because well, Psalms 106, it tells you exactly why the Lord didn't let them get in the land. Psalms 106 and 32. It says. Um, Psalms 106 and 32 says. They angered him also at the waters of strife so that it went went ill with Moses for their sakes. Right. What was the ill that went with Moses for their sakes? The fact that Moses wasn't able to get into the promised land. Right. Because they provoked his spirit. They was talking shit, murmuring. So he spoke and he said that sentence. He put in the we instead of the Lord. Because they provoked his spirit so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. You see? And what was unadvisedly? He said, we instead of the Lord split that rock. It's that, hey, it's that crucial. It's that crucial just for fucking up in your speech just a little bit. Now, imagine you taking all this praise and you letting these people gas you up to put your put your put you in, in this pedestal in their minds. Instead of the Lord on that pedestal, right? And you inching yourself even 
to the point where you might even be getting above the Lord in their minds, above Yahweh Shai in their minds, or on the same level. Imagine what's going to happen with that, man. It's so Matthew 21 and 7. It says, right here, it says, tell you the daughter, oh, I'm start at five. It says, tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass's colt, an ass and a colt, the foal of an ass, right? So the Lord, the king came in on the ass, but you, you coming straight up on the, on, on the stallion, man. And the disciples went and did as Yahweh Shai commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put and put on them their clothes and they sat him thereon. Right? The Lord came in on an ass, but you coming in on a, on, on, a, on a stallion, on a steed. Right. Aren't you supposed to walk as the Lord? Why didn't you come in on the steed? Why was it the horse? Because you want more glory than the Lord actually took upon himself. That's what it is. You want far more glory than what the Lord put upon himself. Isaiah 42 and 8. And it says, I am Yahweh. That is my name and my glory. Will I not give to another? Neither my praise to graven images. And this dude is taking all... The glory to himself. So what do you think the Lord's going to do, man? You, the Lord got a way about humbling men. It's better to, hey, hey, you, you, it's better to take that low route now. Can, uh, uh, correct the congregation and take some of that praise up off you before it's too late, man. John 6 and, and 15, it says, Yahweh shall therefore perceive that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. Right? Now this dude rolling through like a king. Look at him. Bobblehead shaking around. The horse ain't even with the tree. He's trying to shake him off. Look. Listen to it. some noise right now <laughs> yeah how should i perceive that they was gonna make him a king right what did he do he says he departed again into the mountain himself alone right he didn't let that go but this dude is pushing himself up hey the lord a great humbling is coming man a great humbling is coming shalom